Right. So now we're talking about the identity and inverse permutations. And I just opened up the completed notes because I didn't need to write this over again. So the identity permutation, we've got every row is the same. So if we look back at our notes that we completed here, the identity permutation for this set ABC is this first one. ABC, ABC is our identity permutation. To find an inverse permutation, we swap the rows. So let's look at uh, our P2, for example. We would switch the rows, and then we'd rearrange this to be in order, and that would turn into our permutation, or our inverse, sorry. So let's say P2 inverse. We're going to switch them around, and then I'm going to reorder them. So A, B, C. This is my top row now. So matching to A is A, matching to C is B, matching to B is C. So actually, P2, the inverse is exactly the same as the original function, or the original permutation. I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> okay. Discuss the implication of the set of all permutations containing identity and inverse sets. So the fact that we have an identity and an inverse, we said before that it's associative, and the set of all permutations is closed, well, we've got our four properties. This means <clears throat> that we've got a group. So here our group would be our set of values. Now that I can't write on this, let's see. So permutations make groups. So the operation here is the permutation. Yeah, so finding all the permutations, those are our operations, and the set of values is whatever your set of values is.